Hey everyone, Siobhan Nicolau here. Today I'd like to talk about emotional energy and anxiety. I know that's a condition that plagues a lot of people, especially a lot of the young people, um, as it's getting recognized now, uh, empaths uh, and things like that. And they really don't know how to manage it because they weren't really taught about what exactly anxiety is. Now, back in my day, being a hypersensitive person that I am, um, we were called ultra sensitives. And it's was, you know, that's a term to describe someone who feels everything to the degree that most people will never understand. Even today, there are people that have known me their whole life, but still don't understand why I can't hug them at times and all of these things. So you have to really realize that when someone is an ultra sensitive, or, or to, you know, today's empath, that there are things that they're feeling in their emotional body that their physical body is having a response to. Now, remember that emotional and physical energies, bodies are formed together from the time you're conceived. So what we experience when we're born is physical reality is made of that. It's, it's drama and it's, and it's physicality. When in truth, they're love, they just don't know that they're love, but they, they can be transformed, and that's really fantastic. But um, that comes later. It, to learn how to manage your energy in any situation, uh, when we work with ultra-sensitives, we encourage them learning how to ground, not just in meditation, which we don't require or even recommend that you do for long periods of time because it isn't necessary. We've evolved out of that now, at least I have. Um, shorter amount of times, deeper that you go, um, to help you get the feeling of what it's like to have a spirit in the form. When you realize as an empath that you are picking up on the energy around you, what that actually means is your emotional body, which is just full of negative emotion because you came into form, that's all it means. It's not mom or dad or anything else. It's just you decided to take on a form and come back in here. And that's just a byproduct of what happens. <clears throat> Emotional energy is part of living in the world of form. And so it's not that it's, it, it is magnified through you by the presence of the emotional energy in others or just thought forms and energies that are floating around in the world. Now, if you could see emotional energy, most people can't. It's like everybody is walking around like a pig pen uh, in, in most cases. And there are just like these clouds of these denser vibrations that are moving between people and through people. And when someone gets saturated enough and they can't stand how it feels, they want to pass that on. That's what we call it projection. So you can notice in some people who are not used to dealing with their emotional energy or they just, it's an automatic response. They don't even get it. It's totally subconscious. When someone's going through a dramatic emotional experience, they want to hug you. Part of that is so that they feel connection to the love they cannot feel in themselves. And it is also a way to transfer quite subconsciously the negative emotion into the people who can receive it because it's like sharing the pain. People sh like, you know, subconsciously share pain a heck of a lot more than they learn to do love. Because love says, I own how I feel and learn to transform how I feel and take responsibility for how I feel and <clears throat> learn how to be the love that I am. And that is the greatest source of protection. But love is the protection without resistance. And it's much easier than you realize. So when the emotional and physical body are forming in the womb. When you come out and you're born, you take your first breath. Now, the, the inner being of you, it, you inhale it at your first breath. So the baby inhales and cries. It's anchored in the solar plexus by a silver cord. Amazing. That's how it happens. But we're, we're never taught beyond that, which I finally figured out and made sense to me, was that this inner being, like a child is never taught what time to go to bed or anything like that, just drifts around doing what it wants to do because nobody is directing it. <laughs> so here we are, we grow up as children, we're open, children are open, there's no doubt about that. What that means is they have no division in their experience that they're making conscious with the mind. They have lots of ways they feel, but until their mind is sufficiently developed to articulate how they feel or identify how they feel, and then it becomes an emotion, um, they have this neutral experience. But when a kid's mind starts to come into play, 
then it begins to divide and stuffs those feelings down, yet they still have energy. And so the being just floats around, and what that does is it leaves a bulk of the, the physical body exposed to all of the emotional energy of the world, and in resonance, an empath will feel everything around it and be overwhelmed, feel a panic attack. A panic attack is literally when the... <clears throat> Uh, spirit is drifting so far out of the body, responding to something in its midst, that the body innately knows that, hey, if that spirit gets severed from the body, the body's going to die. The body goes into panic mode. What does it do? <gasps> Brings you into this breathing thing where it's hard to catch your breath, but what the body's trying to do is to keep the spirit in the form so the body doesn't die. Now, that's in a pretty extreme case of those panic attacks, but that's in essence what's happening. So when you learn that this beautiful bubble of your inner being can be managed by you, by learning that you um, establish and then maintain a, um, a relationship with this being and work with it to change the program of doing what it wants to do and bringing it down below the form and saying, hey, work with me. I need you down below my feet every waking moment of my day. Uh, I need to feel my source of security, stability, and confidence, which only comes from you. Source is the energy, the life-giving source of even the love itself within that inner being. The inner being is a complete thing. It's not source energy out here and love being here. Source energy gives even love life. And when you're working with the golden light, it doesn't create that avoidance vibration. It's not white light that says, I need to protect myself from the evil that is over there, or I need to, all negative emotion is bad. Well, there was a time I thought that too. It was just I kept seeing something wrong with myself that I needed to fix, which is division in and of itself. When you realize that it's just energy and we get it because we came into form and that the way to manage that is through the love that we are and working with that spirit consciously to keep it below the feet and working with it in the breath, Noticing the triggers that happen when we're ungrounded. Now, this is not um, to make you feel bad about yourself or to beat yourself up like you don't get it yet. This is about just being aware of what your triggers are. Now, most often people get over-identified with the dramas in the world, the emotional energy, the COVIDs, the vaccinated, the non-vaccinated, people's political opinions, all this stuff. Don't ever read the news. I mean, seriously, it will derail you in a minute. Um, and... So their, their energy is literally up in the mental body and kind of out in front of them, over-identifying with external reality. And so that leaves the physical body, which emotional energy is in, exposed to being able to feel everything from the world. And then it comes at you from everywhere and you're just freaked out and whatever. So in the moments that you feel yourself being drawn into a particular conversation or experience with someone... Just bring your energy back behind the eyes and bring it down in the body all the way below your feet. Take a nice deep breath. It's a matter of seconds that that happens. You can actually do that while someone's sitting there and they won't even know that you're doing it. What that does is it changes the way that you feel the energy around you. So what happens is you are buffered in the presence of your inner being, which is non-resistance, which is love. You become confident, stable, and clear. You can be seeing as an observer rather than being in, involved to a situation, to a conversation or whatever, without reacting to it, which would then be a trigger in an emotion. emotion emotional energy sets that feeling in motion and has you be reactive to that feeling. And instead of being that, you're in observance of what is. Not from a place of judgment, not from a place of wrong, not from a place of anything, just from the presence of your inner being, which is love. Now, I've experienced how that works in the way, because we live in a world of resonance, that energy doesn't dissipate. It can be transformed, but it, can, it will not dissipate. So it's everywhere. That's why it can be overwhelming for people. So... You're in this experience, there's a concentration of a conversation going on, and you're all buffered in the presence of your inner being. You may at those times, as the observer, without thinking about what you see or feel, just allowing it to be, can feel in the physical body where this emotional energy is stored, that if you weren't buffered in this presence of your being, you would be reacting to. Now, what's great about that is that being 
you know, stable in the presence of your being makes you so much more self-aware. So you're aware about multi-levels, multi-dimensions simultaneously without it being overwhelming because you know where it's coming from. You can feel it, you're aware of it, but you're not thinking about it. It just is. So that gives you a clue to do one of two things. Now, when you get really good at it, you can absolutely transform the um, response you're feeling on a physical level because you know it's emotional energy giving you that physical response in that moment. While you're just observing what is without thinking about it one way or the other and held in the presence of your loving being, you can drop your inner awareness down to where you feel it in the body and just in your inner dialogue for a second. Just say, love's here. It's always been here. It'll always be here. We got this. You're okay. I love you. It may show itself as the presence of an inner child and it may not. It doesn't matter. It's just a <laughs> trying to get your attention. And the only time you ever feel destabilized is when you're not strong enough in the love that you are. There is this sense of uh, flight and fear that comes up. So working with your inner being that way, if you're over-identified in physical reality, that'll get you every time. Um, when you're just standing there, not really thinking anything one way or another, because we tend to do that. We tend to be otherworldly, if you will. And we're not paying attention to where our energy is. And all of a sudden, we feel something. And this can also happen when you're just waking up. Because the spirit is just coming back into the body. So you can wake up. And there can be this little wobble before it comes all the way back in. And as you're waking up, as the spirit is coming back in, there can be a... A uh, template of energy of fear is something that you feel. And, and that has happened to me many times. I pick up on whatever is around. Now, in my own home, it happens at very specific times. There's always a pattern you can watch for or become aware of to indicate why this is happening, how it happened, and all that after the fact. You don't think about it in the moment. But this information reveals itself to you as you go through these experiences and then just simply pay attention through self-awareness. So it's not the thought process it sounds like. And so, anyway, these thought forms and whatnot, from wherever they come from, can come floating in. You can experience them then. So, I recommend that you sleep with a hand on a solar plexus. I do that. Sometimes I sleep with a crystal in my hand on, on the solar plexus. It just feels better to me. I've noticed that that's something that I taught myself how to do because it just feels better. Um, because of these times I wake up feeling everything uh, around me. And so, um, I work and show people how, you know, I work on holding my space, my personal space. I've learned how to do that through working with my inner being. Now, when, and the third way that that shows up is you feel the flutters in your solar plexus first. Oftentimes that's how it happens. It's always in the solar plexus. So why is that? Because your spirit's connected there. In fact, spirit doesn't speak to you in your head as often as you think. You might interpret the vibration of spirit in your head and then um, translate it. But when you listen to the silence, that's where you get your answers. That's where you get your information. You translate the silence to know what to do from this deep inner knowing, not from what the mind has deduced. And so there is a switch and you, you know, as you go through these different um, awarenesses through the practice of this, you'll come to your own conclusions. But this is what I have found. So when the flutter in the solar plexus happens, that means that your energy is probably drifting too far out of the body and it starts to flutter because as that happens, as your whole body is exposed, mo the bulk of your emotional energy is below the solar plexus, though emotional energy can be anywhere in the body, but most of it is below the line of the solar plexus. And this is where people usually drift. They don't want to go down below there because they're, they've been told it's dark or emotional, but it's... It's not, <laughs> unless you're just observing it as that and empowering it as that. Um, if you're the presence of love, you're stable in the presence of your inner being and being the observer of what is, and love doesn't care, it just loves. And so you see it becomes this very easy way of being that helps this emotional energy come to the truth of what it is. So when the flutter happens in the solar plexus, uh, there's been a couple of times I've had some extreme examples of things uh, and a couple of times where I just got the message Simply. So the flutter in the solar plexus will happen. I don't go to my head and go, where's my energy right now? I just drop it. I literally have played with it so many times that 
when I intend for my spirit energy to hit the floor, boom, it goes there. Now, it doesn't come from as high up as it has before in these circumstances I'm describing to you, but you'll feel it, how, that it's staying deeper in the body by the amount of you know milliseconds it takes for it to actually hit the floor. When it hits the floor, you kind of stabilize it under your feet, this, this bubble of light. Take a deep golden light breath down to the base of the spine. Watch the base of the spine open and drop a golden anchor on a golden chain like that. Now, this takes seconds. Now, just you focusing on feeling that energy field drop, inhaling the presence of your being down the spine, opening the base of the spine, dropping anchor to the center of the earth. The presence of your inner being fills the spine, radiating seven feet, seven and a half feet around you in all directions. It's a sphere. And when you do that, that's where you get your confidence, stability, and clarity and prevent yourself from being overwhelmed by what is happening. When I would feel that flutter sometimes, like standing in line at a Starbucks, it was Spirit's way of getting a hold of me that it wanted me to give a message to somebody. And my earlier path, like eight, nine years ago, was uh, very much like Teresa Caputo's. But it was for me in that way that we were doing, I was doing the same thing she was, but it was only to teach me how to overcome the fear of saying things to people that I did not know. It's different when you are in this business, which I've been in for three decades plus now, and you are um, putting a shingle out and people are coming to you. Uh, you know, or you're working with people you know or you're familiar with, people who are really seeking what you have to teach. Well, then when you have to give a message from spirit, which I always get the awareness of that in my solar plexus first, um, it helps you move through what you're doing. So I'd feel the flutter in my solar plexus, and that's always a cue for me to listen more, not for me to freak out about where is this coming from, who, what, where, when, why, and how. It's about dropping my energy field, taking a golden light breath, and just listening, because the silence in that inner being of you of yours is potent. And when you get used to doing that with your energy, you're going to know exactly what to do, who it refers to, where you're supposed to go, what you are supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. It just gives you everything without thinking. And so that was easy. So, you know, in Starbucks, I'd feel, I'd feel that feeling, and then I would know what to do. So I would, you know, imagine and feel my inner being hitting the floor, take a nice deep breath, and then tuning into the silence, which means tuning in deeper into my spirit, and then knowing exactly who to go to, giving the message and feeling okay about that. You know, there's always this sense of, wow, I did this. So for me, again, it was to help me overcome the fear of situations spirit was asking me to be his messenger. And uh, one time was rather more dramatic. Um, because I feel everything so powerfully, um, I was on my way to give readings actually at East West Books in Mountain View. And when I came back, when I came from the East Coast and went back to California for about seven years, I didn't have a car for the first year and a half, two years. And I took public transportation because I was used to that at the time. And I would take it two and a half hours each way to go to East, Beth, East West Books from Walnut Creek. Now, that whole, I have never experienced California without a car because it's something that you just don't do. Um, and I found the most amazing car, uh, you know, to get me around after that. But anyway, this is the time I was still taking transport. So what I have to do is turn around and face out the window and have everybody at my back because it's just too much energy to be, you know. I trained myself over the years to just don't look, keep walking. You just don't care about what people are doing. You don't look over to the next car and go, hey, what are you doing? You don't do things like that. You just keep to yourself. <laughs> you just keep to yourself. You, you are aware things are there, but you don't have enough. Don't give yourself enough room to judge it or divide in any way. Uh, get identified with external reality, right? What does that do? That does a whole other host of things. So I'm standing there holding on with my sunglasses on, always looking out the window. Well, one day I ended up getting corralled 
in behind a seat. So you go in the doors to this car of BART, and I went to the right, and then there was the back of a seat like this. So I was kind of standing up over here on the wall where they would put bikes. And I got away from my door, and I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't want to turn around and face the wall. It was just a real strange feeling little place. Well, all of a sudden, um, I start feeling the butterflies in my solar plexus. They were a little stronger than usual, and I didn't think about what to do. I just dropped my energy field, took a deep golden light breath, and stabilized in my being. Realized, did not realizing I was ungrounded, because it takes time. You know, you've got to learn self-awareness a little, and don't beat yourself up. Just drop it and inhale, and you'll be fine. Well, what happens in a lot of cases, too, is that I pers perspire profusely. So my back kind of turned into a water wall. And I was just responding. I could feel physically, even as I was contained within the presence of my inner being, I could feel the the strength of my spirit just magnifying around me. And I thought, you know, I didn't think, but after the fact, I'm like, wow, that's kind of a dramatic response. I didn't know what it was responding to. So from the state of listening, I just looked up and I looked over to the left and I saw this black gentleman, very tall, with a black hood, and he just put the black hood over his face. As soon as I looked over him, he covered his face, and I thought, aha, that's what my energy is responding to. Like, I don't care, right? I mean, I didn't even think about anything. I just knew that was the person, and then as we were moving along, I also knew through listening, the deep inner knowing that doesn't need words, that he was the one I was supposed to give a message to. So I think we got off at like 19th Street or something like that, and I got out on the platform just long enough, and I tapped him on the shoulder, and I said, um, you know, your angels would want me to tell you, want me to remind you, rather, that you are the light. And he looked at me like he could not believe who this crazy person was, and he, he said, what? And he pulled his hood back so I could see he had these beautiful brown eyes, and um, he said, I said, your angels want me to remind you that you are the light. And he lined up, his eyes kind of got a little bit of sparkle in him and he lifted himself up on the balls of his feet. And what that taught me was when I'm inspired. And so he, he lifted up on the balls of his feet, tried to repeat what I said and kind of walked away. And at that time I got back on the train cause I was still going. And what I realized about that was that when you're inspired, truly inspired to do this, that's when you give messages. Uh, I've never not given a message I was not inspired to give because you can get hurt doing that. This kid could have shanked me had I just said, oh, he needs to hear what I have to say. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. When I went out there and tapped him on the shoulder, I, what I realized was that the spirit of me was enfolding him as well, long enough for his heart to open to hear the message that was given and for both of us to go our separate ways. And so this is what that incident powerfully taught me. Um, had I just been full of anxiety like I would have been 20 some odd years ago, I would have been so overwhelmed, uh, it could have debilitated me. It could have just taken me down because I'd be resonating with the fear that was focused upon me and the fear in me magnifying so great because I'm a natural medium that it could have gotten real ugly. So it's really a wonderful thing to learn how to manage the spirit and work with it more consciously and realize that in these moments, which take seconds, you can stabilize your, yourself, your body in the loving energy that you are and work with it more often to stay there. And then you'll realize the power of the breath. It's not just in the moment when you're losing it. You drop your energy field and then take the breath and then you see how, wow, I'm calm in this moment. I feel safe in this moment. I'm okay. I'm okay. And you just listen. So, Anxiety can be managed. It really, really can. And it'll give you every opportunity. When you realize it's so scientific, even though I'm not a scientist, this is what I found, it made so much more sense to me when I realized it was simply energy. Because, and then they talk about keeping your vibration high. Well, when you're working with your inner being, which is higher consciousness and higher vibration, and you're working with keeping it in the form of you, you're keeping the whole body of you from the inside out higher vibrating higher in the presence of unconditional love emotional energy can only do two things number one the emotional energy within you 
can transform on its own the more that you stay contained within that loving being. Uh, or whatever is larger emotional energy that's kind of attached itself to you and feeding that small part of you that has become a larger experience for you, it has to let go. So that's how spirit attachments, people want to call it, which are really nothing more than emotional energy feeding your emotional energy in a negative way. Um, they can just fall off on their own. So you make love conscious within you, and then you can literally transform the physical body as well by transforming the emotional energy first. Subsequently, the, 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 uh, emo the physical body just becomes lighter because you are reclaiming the emotions that you are as the light that they are. So you're reclaiming more and more and more of the consciousness that you are. And as you make the consciousness within you conscious, everything transforms quite easily. And so learn how to manage your energy. Anxiety does not have to take you down. Um, like I say, even at these times in my life, it is overwhelming for people who do not feel to the levels that I do to try to make sense of what's happening to me when I am being um, inundated. When, when there are times where there's so much coming at me from so many angles that I just can't even be around people. And it's not a negative experience for me. I actually love it. But, you know... When there is a response from me, people aren't used to getting and my my trying to articulate why things happen the way they do, it's only my ability to see what's going on beneath what they're able to see um, that makes sense. But trying to explain a situation, which I do not do to defend myself, uh, to someone who can't hear it is just a waste of time. So for me, it's a lot of understanding a lot of things that most people can't understand and not trying to get them to understand. But for you folks that have anxiety out there, we can certainly show you how to manage your energy um, so you can have more fun being in the world and not of the world. That is really a nice place to be. You could, you learn to listen to your inner being more the more you work with it, and you'll be inspired to whether you're gonna, you know, supposed to go out or not. And as you make these wiser decisions for yourself, not everybody around you is gonna understand, because of course they don't understand how you operate, how you receive your your information, how how you know what's right for you, how. Um, it just is that way. And so to love the condition that is the anxiety within you, which is really an overwhelmment to your ability to feel what's happening around you, may, making peace with that condition and knowing that it's okay, it's manageable, and it's a gift can get you to start experiencing uh, your ability to do, to perceive these energies uh, so much better because that is half the gift in being able to help others manage their own energy. When you can see and feel beneath what they can't, then you're, you're very helpful at bringing about what they can't perceive within their own subconscious and helping bring that to light for them. So anyway, there you go. Happy 2022. Welcome to the new world that we're not all getting ready to experience. And uh, let's have fun from there. <laughs> have a good day.